uh, Katie Holloway, Lake Stevens, Washington. I, you played women's college basketball um, at Northridge. How did that help prepare playing the sitting volleyball? Um, playing basketball at Northridge helped me prepare for sitting volleyball by giving me the competitive edge that you need to play at the highest level, which is the Paralympics. So um, playing basketball in college is the highest level you can get in America, usually. Um, and so uh, other than professional level. So when you come become a professional athlete um, in the Paralympics, that's that you need that you need that competitive edge and um, you need to understand what it takes to be at the highest level. Um, and a lot of that is an understanding of of how much you need to do while no one's watching, which is you know how much you need to do in practice, but then also. Um, the awareness around who you are as an athlete um, and what you need to do to prepare off the court and in real life. Um, so I think that that's what Northridge, a lot of what Northridge gave me as an athlete was teaching me how to be an athlete and be a high level athlete as well. Okay. And how did you transition into sitting volleyball? Um, did someone find you, or did you progress on your own to it? Or? Yeah, um, Jeff, uh, how I was found for sitting volleyball was that uh, Jeff Stork is, uh, was, an, I think, an 84 Olympian, um, and he is the coach of the women's uh, volleyball team at Northridge. And so he invited the sitting team to come and train at Northridge. And so in 2006, they came and trained at our school and um, invited me out to a practice to watch. My, my athletic trainer actually for basketball said, you should come watch the team. And so in turn, I met the coach, gave him my information. Um, he in turn contacted my basketball coaches at, at the end of our season and said, we would like to invite her to a training camp. And so um, the rest is kind of history. I flew out to a training camp, tried it out, loved it, loved the opportunity I got, um, and decided to stick with it. And the seasons kind of coincided. So um, just kind of all fell into place. It was the right time um, and the right place. Did you have any other background in volleyball before that, like in high school? Or? Yeah, I used to play ba um, basketball and volleyball in high school. I played volleyball in middle school as well. So I played volleyball from seventh grade to 10th grade. And then I quit to um, focus more on uh, basketball so that I could go in college. Okay. When you see um, young athletes who are facing challenges of their own, whether physical or otherwise, what do you tell them to help them overcome those challenges? When I see young athletes or talk to them uh, about challenges, I usually like to listen and figure out what is the problem and then show them the tools to um, to overcome it. Mm -hmm. So, and show them that they have the tools to overcome it. So most of the time, it's a simple problem that they see as bigger than it can be. And so um, oftentimes, I usually will just listen to them a lot and then show them that it's possible uh, by the things they already have, which is willpower, mostly. And then just letting them continue on that path then to, to overcome that or do you help them along? Yeah, usually um, if it's a uh, person with a disability, I do a lot, um, not a lot of mentoring, but I, I often mentor people and I um, build a relationship with them and build a rapport with them and guide them to the right pathway. So if they're trying to overcome, you know, this disability that they recently got in, mm -hmm. um, um, obtained, uh, then I'll usually stay with them. I stay in contact with them, and then I, I usually surround them with good things, which is, depending on if it's a sport, I make sure I um, reach out to them and give them the resources they need to become part of the Paralympics, or whatever they like to do. I support them in, in um, going back to that thing that they like to do. Um, the sitting volleyball team on the women's side has had a lot of success lately. What do you, um, is there anything that you can pinpoint that makes this team a success? Yeah, I, I love that our team has had so much success. I feel like we are starting to become um, an even better team than we ever have. And that's interesting because I always thought we were really great in the first place. <laughs> But a lot of the success is attributed to the, 
the gelling of the team. It matters a lot in I don't in mainly women's, but I think in all team sports on how well the team um, gets along, communicates, and um, the intangibles, the things that um, people can't stat, those things matter a lot. And um, people don't often see that. And that's what our, our success really can attribute to is the fact that we have a lot of young people, we have a lot of people that give great effort, mm -hmm. and all of those things combined, we all want the same, we all finally want the same goal. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like we're at a good place, we have a lot of potential, and our success is all driven by the amount of the way we get along, you know? And I think we have that more now than ever. Yeah, you were mentioning that you have some young players. You have a young captain, even. Mm -hmm. um, how does the blend between the ages, is, is it a different culture, or is it just a matter of everyone has just come together and it's gelling? And no, it's a great point. Um, I think that's what we've always um, had to deal with is that dynamic between the ages because we'll have a player that's 14 and we have a player that's 36 or 37. And no matter what you do, those are the ages you're given and those are the, the dynamics that you're given as people maturity-wise are at different levels. Mm -hmm. And how we deal with that is by spending time together and... Sometimes um, we, we break off and we go our own ways. And I think our team is mature enough to know that we don't all have to be together all the time. And so I think that's why we're, we're good in our dynamic is we have fun together. And when we have to be together, we gel. And when we don't, we don't worry about those, those other things. Um, you know, people can break off in groups and it's okay. It's not that, it's not a, we don't take it the wrong way. Everybody takes it pretty, you know, in stride as it should be as, you know, certain people gel with others just as a team of the same age, people gel in different um, groups. And I think that's always how it's been on teams I've been on is we're all sisters on the court. Off the court, we can be friends, but we don't have to hang out all the time, so. And the last question, USA Volleyball has now just become the NGV for sitting volleyball. Um, how do you th see that as helping grow um, exposure for the sport of um, sitting volleyball? And what can be done better? I think USA Volleyball becoming the NGB is going to grow our sport um, beyond what we really think it's capable of. Um, being a part of um, the the enormous club system that we have in place in the U.S. is huge. I was talking to a Great Britain team um, player and she was saying, we just don't have volleyball across our country. And I think that's what USA Volleyball brings to the table is the amount of club system that they, um, you know, the regions and the clubs um, that already have volleyball. And the people that are excited about those clubs and those teams are automatically excited when they see or play sitting volleyball. Mm -hmm. And so that's what USA Volleyball brings to the table when it comes to the NGB um, side of things and the awareness. Um, what I have to look forward to or what could be done better, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's out there to take. Mm -hmm. That's why USA Volleyball did what they did and became our NGB because they want to be a leader in volleyball and they're saying they're putting um, a standard out there saying that we want to be a part of every part of volleyball and sitting volleyball is no different um, it's a different way to play so everybody that loves volleyball is going to love sitting volleyball and so I think that they're showing their excitement and so I'm just I'm just you know I'm thrilled to see what will come next do you see people getting hooked once they get on the court on the smaller dimension and playing the sport is it that yeah that intense where you want to just get back out there yeah absolutely every time um i did it the week before i left for world championships um i became a part of a boys volleyball club and they were gracious enough to give me um court time 
and have some of their players sit down and play with me. Mm -hmm. And immediately you see the boys, they love the sport. They immediately love sitting volleyball. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a volleyball junkie, you will absolutely love sitting volleyball because it's just a version of the sport that you love the most. Mm -hmm. And it's another challenge in front of you. Everybody's competitive that plays. And so you want to be that competitive in just another version of your sport. It's still volleyball. It's just a different way to play it. And I think that's what people see in sitting volleyball is that anybody can play and nobody's at an advantage. If anything, the people that are new to sitting down and playing are at a disadvantage as opposed to myself who's missing a foot. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, Katie. And, um, You're welcome. Continue playing well in the World Championships here. Thank you.